This is uh, Richard back at you guys. It's Tuesday morning. Nice and cool outside. It's going to be a beautiful Tuesday. We got Brandon's uh, LS swapped uh, Chevy truck in the house. Now we're uh, doing a 350 train in. It's going to be a mild build. Basically uh, a little bit of shift kit, uh, some different clutches and stuff like that. Putting an extra clutch in high gear, uh, changing it up, uh, fixing some weak spots. But anyway, it's old school time. Let's get this 350 apart. I had to get the book out on this one, guys. It's been such a long time. You can see our speedometer gear down in here. This has a steel bullet that takes a special uh, seal in this housing right here. I'm going to go grab one really quick. That way you know. Because if you have an early model 350 like that, you have got to order this, the speedometer seal separately. Now, in the Transgo kit, it will come with a rubber style seal. Uh, a real flimsy style that goes in the later versions. But being that this is a early design, and if you bought a new speedometer bullet now, uh, it would be a steel one, and it would have this hard type seal in it that you have to press in. Instead of the rubber style you just put in with your thumb. So we keep a bag of these around. You don't see them very often anymore. I think I get people coming in and asking for them more than I see them. So. But you can see stock tail housing, bushing, stock seal. This thing, this is all original stuff here. I wish I knew exactly what year this was. We got our retainer for our governor cover. Now you want to make sure this doesn't wobble on the body right here. A lot of times we get them in here, this piece here wobbles here. If it does, it's no good. You want to look at these three spots right here and look for any type of wear in the case even. If it looks good, scotch brought it up a little bit, put a brand new gear on it. You can see the gears come in a little package, different colors, but they will uh, fit. 400, I believe uh, 350 are the same. You get into 700, they change the gear angle to a different direction. Now here we have our yoke seal here. You can see down in here, got the seal. Always a lot of trash in here. Anytime you take these off, there's tons of trash in here. Put a new seal in there. When we put this back on, we like to put just a little bit of sealant right here. That way no fluid can weep by this metal right here because there isn't no seal right there. Pretty simple. And then we have our speedometer gear. Now these gears are pretty tough to get off. I mean, I probably make it look too easy, but you gotta be careful getting them off. That's how I do it, real simple. Now I don't put it on that way. I'll take like a gear like this and set it on here. That way I can tap it on evenly, bang, and get it straight. So, but these are real easy to bust. When you bust it, you're done. Now we have our vacuum modulator over here on the side. Now we are putting a red stripe adjustable. It does have a red stripe on it now. You can see the red color coming through a little bit there. Now this bracket does go one way. You can put it two and make a mistake. The Brackets actually got like little fingers on it, little tabs here. The little tabs hold it in further. You can see how it's bent to do that. So. Got your modulator valve here. When you clean it up, just blow through here. Make sure that little tiny hole's free. No trash through here. Now this modulator is adjustable. There's a screw down in here that's been screwed all the way down in there, almost bottomed out totally. Grab this modulator, and you can you can actually see the screw right there on the end of it. Now the farther in you screw the screw in the end of the modulator, the later and firmer the shifts. The farther out you screw it, the softer and the earlier the shift. You can't separate them, but you can just move them both up or both down. You can't 
uh, split them. Of course, we have our passing gear cable here. You can see here it's all oh, it's no good. It's gonna have to have a new one put on there. And then it just hooks into the TV cable, passing gear cable, rod linkage here. Now some of them will be an O-ring, some will have a boot. Now I believe your overhaul kit will not come with a boot. If you buy a new cable, it'll come with a boot. Now your overhaul kit does come with the O-ring. Now on this intermediate accumulator right here, they do have a, a hole right here on the side. You can put a punch and push that snap ring out right there and then pull it out. Pull the punch out, take your screwdriver, kind of hook it, pull it out of there, kind of work it. Come on. Just all that dirt around it. Come on, get out of there. Then it's got a seal in there too. It's probably hard as a rock. Right, just hook that, pop that right out of there. Come on. Something's got to give sometime. Got our accumulator spring. Yeah, this O-ring's just stink, stink. Oh, no. yep. That's why it's probably leaking around here and stuff. Why it wouldn't come out. And then we have our intermediate accumulator piston here and spring cover. Ugh, oh my gosh. Look at that. That's <laughs> so, nasty, ugh. That's nasty. That's nasty. But uh, on a 350, if you want it to shift firmer into second gear, all you gotta do is leave that spring out. If he thinks that after you take it out, if it shifts too firm, put it back in. But we always leave them out in a performance application. And then if, if, if it pops too hard in second gear, then we can change it by just adding that spring. Shifter bolts. And your factory pan bolts. You see the two, two difference they had there? It's nasty, huh? Yeah. Them things are dirty. For sure. Is that nasty or what? Oh, <laughs> that thing looks like mud yeah. in there, huh? Tang gasket. Now, you can see here, this gold plate here, there's signs of a shift kit that's already been installed. Now, GM did do some shift kits in them, but they were more in the BOPs. I didn't see a lot of them in the Chevys. Uh, from the factory. Now this is a just your plastic style filter. They do make a brass too, but these are really good. And we have our passing gear linkage here. When you push the gas pedal to the floor, it pushes this to the floor. You let off the gas, it comes back. Now when we go back, if he doesn't want a passing gear cable put on this, and we and we block it, uh, we'll block this lever back right here. This is a two, has a two stage to it. It's kind of soft, and then it gets hard. Soft, stops, and then there's another spring that's hard. Well, what you do is you take and put that about right 
touching it and then back it off just a hair and then lock it down. If you don't want it going into it, then it'll hold it past and it'll never shift, but that's all you have to do to take your cable off. Thank you. God bless you, Teresa. Sorry. Now you can see here how we have a green spring for the pressure regulator valve right through here. You can see it through this hole. That's a factory spring. Green, blue, uh, is factory red, black, uh, you'll start seeing a shift kit spring. Now some yellow, and that could be yellow. I can barely see through there. This light up top so bright. It uh, looks yellow. Does it look yellow? Yeah. So that, if that is yellow, then it could be a shift kit spring too because of the plate. So. Now we have our manual valve here and our little S-shaped linkage here. It'll go one way, it's got to go back. You don't want to put this towards the front. It's got to go back like that. We have our manual valve. Now I believe we do have a shift kit spring in here. You can get this pin out right here. Turn it over and kind of push, and the pin will come out. Then you can pull the spring out. Have your boost valve the sleeve, and we have a shift kit pressure regulator spring here. The valve will be factory. It's kind of weird. It's green. It looks like it matches your gloves. I think it's yeah. green. So that's why I couldn't tell if it was I what color it was there for a second. Now, if, if we're going to do some funny stuff to this valve body, so if you want a, a manual capability, but you still want the transmission to shift if you put it in drive, all you have to do is come in here and block this valve. See this? you got the outer valve, the inner valve. Come in here and take a TIG welder or a MIG welder and just weld it solid. <laughs> pretty simple. Yeah, that way you don't have simple. to. Uh, uh, the shift kits will come with a plug sometimes to uh, block this valve forward. But if they don't have it, they don't have it, just take a TIG welder and uh, MIG it, and then uh, you'll be fine. Take all your valves for freeness and stuff. Now this accumulator right here, what I do on these, I'll take them out. And uh, a lot of people like to leave, leave the spring completely out. What I like to do is I want get, to get it out of there But what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a 700 spring. I don't like this piston just totally floating. Take that big spring out of there. Get your clip. Don't lose your clip. But what I do is, I don't. when you do that, this since the valve body sets flat, this piston will always set at the bottom, and this, this snap ring's up here at the top just sitting there. I like it up at the top at all times. So what I do is I take a blue... 4L60E overdrive spring and put it in there and then it just holds it up there. It doesn't affect the, the, the way the piston moves or anything, but it holds it at the top. And just get rid of this one. It'll, it'll, it'll work a lot better. This one actually I'll put in a 4L60E and the 1 2 accumulator and that works even better there. So, pretty simple. Pretty simple. And we have our band servo here. Got a little washer right here on the end that goes on first and the piston. Very simple. Now you can see here this is a gold transgo type shift kit plate it looks like to me. If I get this gasket back maybe it'll say it on there somewhere but I don't see it. Um, let me get this off. What this plate here does is the one I'm thinking. It helps apply your third gear clutch and by uh, redirecting your fluid to this channel right here. Okay. Plate covers it up. Now your factory plate uh, 
won't have this hole, your gasket won't have that hole. So when I go get a kit and open it up and I'm gonna use put new gaskets on here, I gotta make this hole. It will not be there. My kit's not opened up yet, I'll show you. So you have to make them holes. Now you can also see here, this these two feed holes right here have been enlarged, even from the, the plate from the factory. These have been drilled even bigger. Now you notice here too, um, you, you only got one check ball here, but they put them little soft black rubber ones in there. They're about gone. I don't even know why they put that one there. This one's out. But what I do is I usually leave these two in here, leave this one here out, and leave this one here out. Now this plate don't have one for here. If you notice, there's no hole for it. See where this check ball here has a ball and, and a feed seat here. See it? So, but this plate here basically is what this does. Like I said, this uh, redirects fluid uh, to your third gear clutch. It's the same thing as leaving your sealing ring off your stator and leaving the center seal off in your drum, just like you do on your 400s and stuff like that. So, pretty simple. Got parking the linkage off. Get this beautiful mount off here. Say she's original too. Yep, she's cracked. History right there in the making. Now this is a nine inch 350 uh, by the tail housing. I just go to that. The six inch the tail housing is about this long. So if you're doing a 700 swap, if we was going to put a 700 in this vehicle, you wouldn't have to do no drive shaft work or anything. Where if it was a short shaft, then you'd have to lengthen the drive shaft. So. But if you got a 359 inch, you can put an overdrive in your truck and not have to do nothing hardly. Then it would go down the highway really nice. We got our veer, gear vendor in to do our four, finish our 400. Finally, that's going to be exciting. Now you can come in here with this screwdriver and pop this pump out, real simple, or you can use a pump pulling tool. Grab it, stick it in the center, and then you can pull it out real easy. Like that, or you can take a screwdriver or some type and get in there and try it out too. Pretty simple. Now anytime we get a 350 in here, we want to keep our fingers crossed that the pump's good. We got some that come in, but more they're getting harder and harder to find. Now you notice here we have three ceiling rings on this stator right here for third and reverse. What they do is they leave this ceiling ring off right here and it's the same thing as putting this plate in. Okay. Now these are your forward ceiling rings here. Anytime you get a, uh, a, a Teflon solid ring like this is, your metal ones when you take them off there's nothing under them. But when you get a, a solid ring like this there will be a metal band under here that you have to take off. It's kind of hard to get it off. I got to stick something back in there to kind of hold it. Hey, there it is, right there. You can barely see it. Mm -hmm. So when you go to put your metal ceiling ring back on there, your new one, or your high pressure ring, it won't fit if you leave that on there. But see, now I can take this metal ring on there, it fits perfect. But with that on there, I couldn't put this metal ring on there. Which we're using high pressure rings on this unit, so. But this is a bearing style, it's not a washer style pump. Which are the better ones, I like them a lot better. Your intermediate piston supplies your intermediate clutch. Now sometimes the springs won't be made on here. They'll just set in the piston all by themselves and then you put the retainer on top and bolt it down. Got your two seals, pump gasket. And what we're looking for, any type of wear in here,
stator looks beautiful through here. Really nice. We're looking here at the pump gears. They made multiple thickness of pump gears, so we have to mic them and make sure uh, the thickness this direction and to get the right depth, right gear. You can see here the converter was going really nice into the pump gear, almost all of it. So that's really nice. Pump body looks really nice too. Getting light over here, you can see it a little bit, but it's still in good shape. No lip feeling or anything like that. Put a set of new pump gears in there, paint it up, be really nice. And here we have our intermediate wave. Now we have some that are hooked together as one solid ring, and then we have some that are split. Haven't seen any issues with either style. So just make sure you put it back in. If you don't, second gear will shift so hard that you won't want it to shift. Especially if you leave your spring out of your accumulator on the side. See our second gear clutches here starting to fall apart. Actually, you can just pull it off. It looks like, huh? Mm -hmm. So this thing's all original. That's what I like about it. Our clutch is almost gone, huh? Mm -hmm. Totally flaked off. Yeah. And we have our band down in here. We have our engine brake band. Same way, just deteriorating. And then we have our high gear drum, reverse drum. You can see here where your ceiling rings run. If there's any type of rutting or anything like that, you want to get rid of the drum, but just check it. Scott's brought it up really good. Check your intermediate sprag. You can hear that squeak. That tells you that it's a, a roller style sprag. It's not the 34 element style. Because they didn't ever come out in 350s. You had to buy them separately. 400s, some of them, and the 4L80 East, uh, some of them. You want to scotch right this up really good. And you have your sprag assembly here that's no good. It fell apart already when I just took it out. This should stay together when you take it out of here. It shouldn't fall apart. So that tells me the springs are totally smashed backwards. See how that one looks good? That one there's totally smashed. Mm -hmm. See, anywhere the bearing fell out, they're smashed. See, that one's really mm -hmm. smashed. Yeah. Smashed. So new sprag assembly put in there. You do also want to look here and make sure that your roller hasn't rutted it out right through here. Same way on your 400s. 180 grit there, then come in here, woo! So we got some clearance there, guys. Get my flashlight out, we gotta see this clearance. I think we got a little clearance in here. Wow. <laughs> no, you think there's something missing, huh? Look at all that, I think there's like a quarter of an inch in there. No. But what we got is the, the clutch materials probably fell off and that's what we're seeing in the pan. All that stuff there, it just slowly grinds it up. Getting it out of there. And of course, you can see there's no clutch material on these clutches at all. They're, they're just totally smooth. Mm -hmm. Now here, I'm gonna grab one of our, our high energy clutches and you can see, I mean, there's just nothing on it. It's glue. There's physically nothing on there. Mm -hmm. uh, how that was working. <laughs> I don't know. Normally that would, something like that, uh, you'd think that'd just burn up instantly and cook it, but it, it actually was still probably shifting. Um, let me get this seal out of this drum real quick, Tracy. Okay, we got our snap ring off here. Pull our piston out. 
And you can say a seal here. You're gonna have a seal here. And then you're gonna have a seal here. This seal here is the seal we're gonna be leaving off. We're gonna be leaving this seal off. We're gonna be leaving this center ring off. And what that is, that's the same thing as what they're doing right here in the shift kit. That they're lit, they, when they, what they did is they put the shift kit in with that with the tranny still together in the car. Now, if we would have had this shift kit uh, and us building the tranny, we wouldn't use the shift kit anyway because we'd do our modifications ourselves and make it work just the same way. But uh, you can do both of them if you want. It doesn't matter. But just make sure you leave it off there. Put your new bushing in here. Scott's brought this all up really nice. Now you notice they have a narrow bushing. We're going to be going back with a wide bushing. Okay. Now you also notice this stator has a metal sleeve on it right here. Okay, some of them uh, are cast. The bushing runs right on the same metal as the, the stator's made out of. But the roller bearing style, they did put a sleeve on here. So, pretty simple. Now, we are going to upgrade this too to a five clutch drum uh, instead of a four. And we have a bearing here. Now, when we put our wide bushing in here, we want to make sure we put it down in far enough to clear this right here okay but if you put it in too far it'll rub right here so there's not a whole lot of room for that wide bushing so what we do is we put it in to where it just barely clears this bottom lip on this bearing right here okay you can see the, the piece mm -hmm. that way as long as it doesn't touch there you're fine and it'll, it'll clear the stator Now you can see here our forward clutches, if you look down in here, they're already starting to strip. You can see eighth of the, the teeth are missing here. Mm -hmm. You want to look here, especially too, for wear. Here for your washer that runs and a bushing runs here. Any type of wear here, here, there's two bushings that run here and here in your stator. One bushing here. All them bushings uh, on that stator you have to replace them. If not, you can get converter drain back even in a 350. So pretty critical. And you can see your clutches here. That's such an early clutch. I mean, it's kind of Neat to see them again. I said we're into such into this all this new stuff now. Ooh. You can see this one here is just totally flaking away. It's in the pan. It's in the pan. Now a lot of people don't realize on these 350s they say, well, how do we set clutch pack clearances and stuff like that? Well, what you got here, this is a really good example here. Let me show you how this looks. If you look at these top hats. This ledge right here, this ledge right here, there's no ledge there. Well, to set your clutch clearances, I might have to put this one in there. Or I might have to put this tall one in here. Or I might have to put this short one in here. But if you look at our forward clutch, it has a, it has a small lip on it right there. Well, if I need to tighten that drum up, I'll grab me a plate that has an even taller lip right here and use it to check my clearance. Well, maybe I need to go a little bit more. So I'll grab this one with a little bit taller one. See, to set my clutch pack clearances. Other than that, there's not a whole lot of way to do it. If you come over here and look at your direct clutch, same way, see it has a, a step on it. So that's how you set it. You can do other ways, but I mean, that's the, the way you're supposed to do it. So I was showing a customer that come in yesterday the same thing. That's how I had them there, so simple. You can see your three tab washer that sets down in here on the top of the planet. Right here. Now you always see these have a lot of wear. They wear in the middle here, not on the outer edge. It's because it sets right here on this, like that. And the washer is actually bigger, or, or excuse me, wider. And you can see here where it wears up to here, and then it's not. So always replace them. They do make a brass one too that works really good. 
And we have our four tab washer here. We have a bushing here. out of there real quick now sometimes um, there'll be a Teflon bushing down in here instead of a brass bushing I hate 350 snap rings but they're probably the ones the worst oh there it is little thin thing a lot thinner than a 700 style so and your kit will not come with another one like your 700 or your 4 l 60 do <laughs> so that means don't lose don't that. lose it yeah same way here you want to check any places where your bushing runs check these gears here for wobble because you know all 350s now high mileage stuff so change you all your, your bushings Another plastic thrust washer. We don't really see ever anywhere in this area right here, from plastic to metal. Now you got bushings in here you want to replace both ends. Check your sun gear for wear. Now when we change, pull this sprag assembly out, uh, it's probably going to have a small sprag in it, but we can actually upgrade this to the wide sprag. We can put a 4L60E sprag assembly in this 350. Ooh, almost got you, Tracy. Of course, we have our anti-clunk spring. We have our bearing that has a tapered end on the bottom of it that sits down in there like that. So when you put your case bushing down in here, you better make sure it's stepped. You cannot put it flush. If not, it's going to hit here, make metal. Uh, All the clutches are just flaking like crazy in here. That tells you how old they are. Even our low reverse clutch is almost down to nothing. Seals are hard as a rock. It's really, tell you just got the, the miles out of this thing, definitely. Now here we're gonna have a, a little narrow sprag. We can go out and get in the trailer and get a 4060E sprag assembly and body and put a new sprag in there and, and have an updated sprag in the back. The main thing is you want to check the depth here because they make uh, two different depths from here to here. So, very simple. You got your lower planet, put a new bushing in here, check your pins for any type of purpling, wobbling or anything like that. Now, since we do have a bearing style uh, ring gear down here on the bottom, uh, they do make a three tab washer style too and then they make a bearing style, okay? The planet is the same. You can, if you get a bearing style, you can kind of polish this up right here and you can put a thrust washer right on it, okay? The bearing style are better, but these bearings are getting really hard to find and these pieces here are getting hard to find too, so. Uh, it is what it is, guys. These old 350s, the parts are just getting scarce, scarce, scarce. Got like 400s and everything like that. And we're buying cores like crazy to, to get these parts and just to stack them back there just so we have something for five years down the road, maybe 10 years down the road. If not, we're going to be totally done with these type of units and stuff. So I see the 350 fading out anyway, the 400 stepping up, the power glide, uh, stuff like that. So y'all don't forget to go subscribe, guys. we got a ton more show to go. Teresa, you know we're always uh, thanking you for video and definitely. And Annie. She kicked back again sleeping, guys. She just loves the show. Don't forget to subscribe. It's Tuesday. Come on Wednesday. Come on Friday. Y'all have a great day.